let's talk about what you get inside the box. So the 310 and the 510 are two different models. And the difference between the two is the fact that the 510 is gonna include two fans where the 310 is gonna include just one. Now, both of these coolers, as far as how they are, are both a four heat pipe design. So there's no change to the heat sink between the two models. The only difference is the fan being added to the 510 model. Now, what does that do? Now, with the 510 model being able to have an additional fan, of course, it gives you better overall air performance or air cooling because you, you know, you've added that second fan. And in most common places where that CPU cooler is gonna be mounted, you're gonna have that rear exhaust fan as well. And this can give some nice benefits to boost up, especially if you're using just like one of those stock generic fans that come included with the case. Now, the 310 and the 510 have a nice new design and uh, come with uh, a pretty tough array of cooling performance. Now, what you're gonna get out of the box is just a couple of things. I mean, you'll get your basic manuals and all that stuff. This thing is actually quite nice to be able to give you a good breakdown of everything that's gonna be in the box. And then of course we have both Intel and AMD on both sides here. The 510 and the 310 are gonna have this nice foam packaging that we're gonna include for the heat sink. So we're gonna get some fans included, of course, in the box. And uh, this is just one of them. I've already put the other one on the other cooler because you know I'm trying to save some time, but the 310 is gonna include one of these. And then the 510 is gonna, of course, include two so that way you can sandwich them together between the heat sink itself. We're gonna have an accessory box that's gonna be in here. And this is gonna have a couple of things with it. Now, of course, with that, um, with the 510 model, we're gonna include the PWM splitter cable. So basically you only take up one uh, header off of the motherboard and then it'll give you, you know, those two ports out. Now, of course, the 310 will not include that splitter because it's only gonna come with a single fan on there. And you're also gonna get these little mounting brackets. And with that, I'm gonna be able to take the fan and then take this particular bracket. And then as you can see, all it does is it just adheres to the stock mounting points. And then that's just gonna take a coarse screw that's gonna go right on in to be able to secure this bracket down on both sides of the cooler. Now, also included as we take out all of our accessories. Also, we got some screws right here in the pack. We got this, this is kind of interesting. Like if you guys are, you know, you guys like, you know, did with a mod, you know, played with models back in the day and you'd get like that model boat or that model plane. This probably looks pretty familiar for a lot of you guys, but a very simple design with the way we have everything set up for like our mounting system. And then with uh, an all plastic, this is a pretty thick plastic back plate. The mounting options on it are really nice. You can see these little, um, you know, see how this is recessed in here for the screw, allowing the screw to be held in place on the back plate so you don't have to worry about it spinning or anything when you're mounting it from the front side, you know, getting everything uh, secured onto the motherboard. And then of course, you're gonna have that metal retention ring that's gonna go around the top of this to be able to secure it down and then having your uh, tension bar that's gonna go across there. This is gonna link up and then it's gonna hold that cooler down in between as you mount it on top of your CPU. Now we're gonna throw in some other things like some thermal paste as this particular cooler does not have any pre-paste stuff on here. Now the difference with the 310 versus the 510 is gonna be that second fan. And the thing that you're gonna wanna make sure you note is that as you see here on this one, I have the brackets mounted on the front face of the fan where when you look at like this one, the brackets are mounted on the back face of the fan. So this allows you to be able to do a push-pull configuration. So that way the fan that's gonna be mounted here on the front and then say with the 510 model, where you're gonna to wanna to mount the second fan on the back, just like that, is gonna be able to give you that push through airflow, having this one push and this one pull. Now, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna remove the stock bracket from the motherboard so we can go in and replace it with the new bracket system. Now, a lot of times with this stuff, I don't recommend using a drill if it's your first time but uh, removal is actually not as much of a concern because it, it definitely helps speed the process up taking it off. But uh, if you are um, not, haven't done this a lot, I highly recommend uh, not tightening it down with, uh, with a drill just to, you know, 
just to get that disclaimer out there you guys and then once i get the last one out my back plate's gonna fall and then i'm gonna have my four exposed holes i'll go ahead and lift this up and ha ha surprise so here's my amd stock back plate all right so we have our back plate removed we're gonna have you know this area back here exposed and you're gonna see here on the back plate that it's gonna say amd on one side and it's gonna say intel on the other side and one of the easier ways to also tell is that you're going to see that these recessed points here and here is more of a square pattern and then when you flip it over for amd you're going to notice that this is more or less like a rectangle with these four points now there's going to be a couple of different options that are going to be uh preloaded on this fun little bracket now you're going to have these guys right here for uh i believe these are for intel so i'm not going to be using these ones per se but you are going to need the four little metal uh thumb screws so you got basically four thumb screws and you got four spacers right there this is going to be my retention clip now this is going to be what's going to go in between on the bracket and then this of course is going to seat into the cooler to be able to mount it in there and we'll, we'll go over that in just a minute and of course then we have our little mounting hardware bag of fun today we're talking about amd now with AMD, we're gonna give you a nice explanation as far as which holes you're gonna mount into where you got A and B, you see that? And then see what B means, AM4. So that's pretty much gonna be most of what everybody's doing today. And then of course, this is gonna be the metal bracket that we have right here that's gonna be going over the top and then a breakdown on the back plate, top plate, and just kind of how everything kind of sandwiches together. So first we're gonna do is we're gonna get the back plate ready. I think that's probably the, the, the easiest way to go about this. So with the back plate, we're gonna have four, these are gonna be our pass-through screws that we're gonna go. And then of course, these would be the core screws. So these are the core screws that these would have been used for the brackets that are gonna mount to the fans that are gonna sandwich in on the cooler and everything. So with these, like now we're referencing the A and the B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the screw through and as you can kind of see, it's it's kind of squared. So when I kind of, when I pop it all the way in, you guys can see how that, see how it recesses down through it. And then the other thing that's great about this too is it holds it in there. We'll go ahead and we'll get our four pass through standoff screws, whatever you want to call them. You guys insert fun name for these. So then we have like that, we have that all set up. So then that's going to be our back plate. So now that we have our back plate set up, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have these little spacers. We're gonna put our little spacers on our back plate once we pass it through the motherboard. Come through the motherboard, we're gonna drop this down in there. And then once we have this drop down in there, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be able to put our bracket on the top. So let's go ahead and uh, show you guys that now. So here's our motherboard. Here's gonna be our back plate. So this is gonna drop down in where AMD is gonna be on this side. That's just gonna go right down on into here, just like that. So I'm just kind of holding it in the back while I put my four spacers on. Now this top plate is gonna go ahead and it's gonna mount in where you're gonna have these little notches that are gonna sit in here on, uh, on the fan screws. So I'm just kind of holding this from uh, the back with my one hand and I just for the most part just pushed the four mounting clips right into the actual uh this this cover plate so kind of joining the two as you can see I can kind of let go and uh even for that if I bring it in even closer for you guys to see you can kind of see where those brackets are just it's just kind of holding it all in together and then you're going to come in with uh the thumb screws and you're gonna do this to secure this down. So I'm going ahead and I'm just mounting my four, my four screw points as far as, you know, the actual housing that's gonna be going on both sides here of, uh, for the cooler. So as I have this set up, I'm gonna have my bracket mounted right there. And then with this, I'm just gonna give, you know, just this is hand tightened and it's gonna give me a nice, good secure on my case. And then you can see here on the back with the bracket, you just wanna make sure that these guys stayed in their little grooves all the way around. One, because you wanna make sure you get the added length because it's really important for how everything matches up and this has got a good tension 
on the back, pushing through to secure the bracket on the front. So I have my tower cooler right here. This is gonna be my tower cooler. Ideally, you're gonna want it that way. You can't install the heat sink with the fan pre-installed because you have to go down here to put this retention bracket in. So the retention bracket has to go in first. And in order for that to go in, the only part that really requires a tool, you have to put the heat sink in with no fans on them at all. So that's what I wanted to kind of show you guys. And then with the particular bracket to show you as best as I can, you're gonna have the bracket sit down in here. And as it sits down in here, you're gonna notice that there's little notches there, as well as the little, it's like a little, not like a teeter totter, but you kind of got that, but this, what this does, it prevents it from slipping out of place or out of its little groove as it tensions down to uh, secure onto your CPU. We got right here, we got our Ryzen CPU. Put a nice little bead of thermal paste on there. Make sure you remove this guy for awesome cooling. So I'm just going to take it and just kind of line it up with where my CPU is and just kind of give it like a little bit of a, a smudge. Now we have our retention bracket. Now with our retention bracket, we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert it in between the cooler. Now you could do this beforehand or whatever. It's not a big, big deal. But ultimately, I'm going to line this up. And I mean, you can either use your fingers to kind of get one of them started. I'll just come in here and all I'm really trying to do right now is just get the threads to connect. Because this is where you're going to have your, your tension for the cooler mounting on top of the CPU. And this is where you're also going to have a little bit of play on this. So as you're tightening down, just making sure that this is, you know, going to going to fit in there just right. And then with that, we're going to just take our fan. Ideally, what I like to do is I'll put, I'll hook one side on just like that. So I have it hold one side on, use my hand here because I don't want to put pressure on the bracket itself. And then I'm just going to take it and that's all I'm going to do. And then of course with that, because we took note of our fan cables, we'll just go ahead and we'll tuck this guy right in here. And we'll plug our fan into where our stock CPU cooler, because you know, our, our this is our AMD stock cooler that we originally had in there. And then we went ahead and we're gonna go ahead and mount and connect up our fan. So we get, you know, PWM performance. So we've gone ahead and uh, we got our memory put back in there. We got our Tough Air 310 cooler installed. So let's go ahead and get the graphics in there. Okay, so just in a real time environment to kind of show you guys a little bit about what's going on with this. You guys can kind of take a look. We have the system set up right now. As you can see there, we are running in. And I mean, of course, my talking is making the DB up. But as soon as I be quiet, just to let you guys know, you can kind of see that I have uh, a decibel reader in here. We've already recorded the results of that. But just take a look. So about 55, 56 for uh, our uh, decibel rating with the system running idle. Now that part right there, of course, is because we are running the system with, uh, you know, we have some software up and running. We got this kind of stuff set up and we're gonna be using A to 64 to run our benchmark. So that way we can increase our temperature and see how well our Tough Air uh, cooler can do. Come on over here and let's get this started. We got our stability, stability test going. You guys can already see that turning yellow right there. We're seeing that turn yellow. So we got the system, we're up and running. And I'm looking at it right now and yeah, I'm sitting, uh, it went up pretty fast. It's up to about 84 right now. And we are looking at uh, the fan speed currently running about 2000 RPMs. So the tough air coolers do run about a 2K RPM speed with this, as well as seeing the package deal right now, we're sitting about 85. So we got the build up and running here. The one thing that I'm definitely gonna say, first and foremost, that's the easiest, is this ain't red. It's still yellow. We're running about 83, 84 um, uh, Celsius on the CPU, which is pretty good from what we were dealing with with the stock cooler about 91, 92. That's almost a 10 C difference just right out of the box. We get to jump right on over here. Here is the results 
from what we came up with for our uh, tough air cooling. So as we can see from the stock cooler, as far as the stock cooler that we had, we were sitting about 92 Celsius under load. That also in turn showed us that we were about 48 idle as far as the two temperatures with the blue and the red for both idle and load times. And with that, with our little decibel reader that we had running in the case with all the panels closed, we were looking at about a 77 dB level. And a lot of that was because of that stock fan. Stock cooler, that's more or less what we're gonna get. This is a stock cooler, brand new, out of the box that came with our AMD 3900X. Now, of course, 92 is pretty close to the threshold of 95 Celsius, which is on the AMD CPUs. And jumping over to the Tough Air 310, we can all see that the Tough Air 310 dropped it down almost 10 degrees Celsius, down to 83 under load and also to notice that we had about an idle temperature of about 42 as well as being able to see more than a 10 db drop on uh the the decibel rating under load now these decibel ratings the ones in the green are under load we didn't record idle because idles whatever you know what i mean um so being able to see a nice drop from 92 to 83 on just the CPU temperature alone, as well as being able to get a lower volume on that, really did show a nice effort with it. Now, of course, jumping up to the 510 model, we saw a nice little drop on the load temperature, but one of the things that I definitely wanna point out here is look at what our idle did. So being able to add that secondary fan, when you're browsing the internet, or when you're just doing some low load, applications because again we're running a to 64 on something like this where you're maxing the cpu all cores at 100 percent and especially with a 3900x when you're talking 12 cores on the cpu 24 threads there i mean there's a lot involved there with that there's a lot of heat there involved with that too so i thought this was a pretty tough test for a new tough air cpu coolers and being able to see a decibel rating increase very slightly for adding the second fan really kind of shows you the performance and the focus that we have on a nice silent operation tower cooler versus something that's going to be a lot larger a lot heavier to be able to give higher cooling performance and everything i think it's going to do what you're going to need for most of the cpus out there for a lot of people that are looking for that budget so this was our this was our data that we did ran some tests on it and everything got some good stuff going on with that and uh, yeah our cooler looks a lot better and everything like that and you know especially too if you guys aren't really a big fan of that rgb yeah that was the tough air man i'm telling you all motor all motor no rgb no thrills easy installation and this is a new cooler here from thermaltake